We are on it, Rishi Sunak declared today as he sought to reassure the hundreds of sub-postmasters who were wrongly convicted of defrauding the post office and the Horizon scandal that he would speed up the process of quashing their convictions and making sure they get full compensation. This evening, a minister is in the Commons to update MPs on the government's plans to deal with the miscarriage of justice. The post office has apologised to all those affected. Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, reports. I got my life back. I'm not a criminal anymore. <laughs> it's been bloody hard. Over two and a half years since the appeal court quashed their convictions, the sub-postmaster's saga continues. 28 people. How much? I know, daylight robbery. That's the post office for you. <laughs> ITV's dramatisation of their plight has dragged this up every leader's political agenda. So, first thing to say is this is an absolutely appealing miscarriage of justice. Right. Uh, many of you in this room would have watched the drama and congratulations to ITV uh, for doing a superb job. People should look, know that we are on it and we want to make this right. The money's been set aside. Now, what we are now looking at is how can we speed all of that up? Right, hey, I'm Rishi, how are you? I'm very well. How are you guys, you right? Rishi Sunak was on a campaign visit to Lancashire. Ministers have rushed forward meetings to consider a blanket quashing of all sub-postmasters' convictions. I believe the Prime Minister should be, do, should, should be doing more. Did you take your tablet today? Yeah. Vachas Patel's father, Vipin, was charged with stealing £75,000 from the post office and convicted of fraud in 2011. His health has really gone down um, since the wrongful prosecution. It, it affected the business, footfall, uh, re reputation damaged, it's in tatters. Um, 70, 80% of the family were horrible to my father. Rishi Sunak said money to compensate those wrongfully convicted, like Vipin Patel, has been set aside. My dad was one of the first ones to be quashed on the 11th of December 2020 at the Court of Appeal. Three, three years have gone by and my father has not received an interim payment. Statement from the minister later on about the post office scandal. For those still awaiting their convictions being overturned, ministers are looking into passing an act of parliament that would quash all convictions brought against sub-postmasters, even though appeals are usually looked at on an individual basis. I do believe that actually the judiciary are as embarrassed about this and as angry about this as everyone else, because after all, people were convicted in courts and they were all hoodwinked. I'm Edward Davey and I'm the Postal Affairs Minister in the Department for Business, Innovation and Skills. One of those falsely accused of theft said Sir Ed Davey, as a former minister for the post office in the coalition government, should consider resigning. I wish I'd known then what we all know now. The post office was lying on an industrial scale to me and other ministers. And when I met uh, Alan Bates and listened to his concerns, I put those concerns to the officials in my department, to the post office, to the National Federation of Postmasters. And it's clear they all were lying to me. I'm not prepared on behalf of the post right. office. I've got my answer, so you, so you won't. No, you, you won't haven't work. got your answer. You haven't heard a yes or a no. I'm simply saying that at the moment I'm not able to answer your question. The Prime Minister, through his spokesman, strongly hinted he agreed with those calling for the former boss of the post office, Paula Venels, to be stripped of her CBE. If you want to see my accounts. Number 10 also suggested that Fujitsu, who provided the faulty accounting software at the heart of the scandal, should pay for some of the compensation. I think there's a sense that the raising of the CBE issue by number 10 is a little bit of chaff that's been thrown in the air because other bigger solutions to what's gone on here are not ready. And we've just been listening to the, uh, while you were listening to that report, the Minister for the Post Office, the current one, has been uh, telling the uh, House of Commons that he hopes to come forward with solutions very shortly. We know that the government is looking at blanket exonerations uh, for people who've been uh, convicted, sub-postmasters, and also looking how to speed up payments. In both these cases, they're looking at the possibility of uh, bulk exonerations way outside the normal tradition uh, uh, of uh, legal affairs in this country, and maybe even uh, bulk blanket uh, uh, compensation figures. Again, 
that doesn't fit comfortably with uh, tradition in this country. Some people will have different needs. Uh, there could be members of the family who are uh, affected of a sub-postmaster and other things like that. But those are the sort of things that are being looked at to try to speed up this in entire process. I should also say the post office spokesman uh, has previously said it shares the aim of the public inquiry into all of this to get to the truth of what went wrong uh, and establish accountability. So what have we learned today about Rishi Sunak's election strategy then? Well, yes, that's what he wanted us all to be talking about. He didn't go to Lancashire uh, uh, just to, uh, for, the, for the travel uh, experience. He went there to try and lay down some parameters of how he wants to shape this general election. And rather interestingly, they're different again uh, from some that he's laid down before. You'll remember at the party conference in October, he was talking about a sort of revolution in public life, ripping up the way things have been done for the last 30 years. There was a telling phrase in what he was talking about today, uh, which suggests a change of strategies saying that what he wants to bring people is, is peace of mind. Well, that's hardly a revolution, but it's the framing that he wants to put on it. And at the moment, all the noise from this issue, as well as others, but today uh, the postmaster's uh, scandal, obliterated Rishi Sunak's other message. Gary Kim. Well, the man who helped make all this possible through his tireless campaign for justice was the former sub-postmaster Alan Bates. He fought for two decades to expose the Horizon scandal and inspired the ITV drama. So when I spoke to him earlier, I asked what he has made of this sudden rush by politicians to try and find a solution. Well, it's great that we're actually starting to get real movement down in Westminster. I think it's... Yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of support over the years from politicians, but now it seems to have um, brought everyone together. And, and let's hope they can actually sort this out now. Are you surprised that it took a drama on TV to regalvanise the debate? I'm pleased. I'm pleased this has actually achieved something in there. I mean, it's a good drama. It's great. I mean, the, the actors were great in it, and they certainly got over the, the human suffering and misery inflicted on them by this major corporation. Um, so, yeah, I'm very pleased with it. So if you sat down with Rishi Sunak and could write out your prescription, what, what would it be? What are the things they could do right now? First thing and the priority is to get money that's owed to the, the actual victims, the original 500 people. They've got to get that sorted. It's been going on for far too long. We've lost 50 or 60 of them along the way. 70, in fact, thinking right. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's diabolical. Then they need to look at who's responsible in all this and hold them to account. At the same time, they've got to try and sort something out with all of the convictions, those that haven't come forward yet. There's, there's a short list of jobs that they've got to get on with and they've got to get on with them now. There's a big debate around getting the CBE back off Paula Vanell, the former CEO of the post office. Is that important to you? Well... I mean, I was offered an OBE and I refused it on the grounds that she had a CBE. I mean, she had a CBE for services to post office. Someone has to explain to me what service has she done the post office, really? And who actually thought it was a good idea to give her a CBE? And do you think there should be um, prosecutions now of the people who are behind this? I mean, the prosecutions, whether or not that actually takes cases down to others to decide, but I know they are starting to look at it, and it certainly needs to happen in the, in the cases of the real guilty. And personally, where does this leave you? I mean, there's a lot of anger out there that people are feeling just watching this as viewers. How, how much has it sort of dragged up for you? <laughs> I've been living with it for over 20 years, and it just seems another day. Mind you, it's another day with a house full of film crews. Talking to you now, I can see what a good job Toby Jones has done um, of portraying you in that uh, you're, um, you're a very even temperament. But, uh, but, you know, how would you describe your anger levels today around this whole scandal? Well, actually, I think they're quite good, really, apart from when I'm doing interviews. But, I mean, I think it's great that we're managing to get the message out and enforce what's been going on for all these years. And, and, and the media is very welcome, and it's great to have so much interest in it. Can I also ask you about some of the, the politicians who are being blamed? There's a, a lot of focus on Ed Davey, who's just one of the many ministers who was responsible for this. Um, do you hold him personally responsible any more than the others? 
I, I, I can't say that because I, I think most of the ministers have been given a, a real bum steer by their, by their officials and by post office. I think post office have been briefing against our campaign for many years, right across all the political parties. So, I mean, just holding him purely responsible, I, I think, is a little bit much. And I just wonder, you know, there'll be, there'll be a people with totally different causes watching your story. Um, what advice would you give people who are mounting campaigns as somebody who mounted a very dogged, long-running campaign that has finally now looks like it might come to fruition? Well, the first thing I'd advise is people to find the support of their, their local MP. I mean, that's been enormous, enormously helpful for us. And it's helped to centre the campaign from uh, around the country. But, I, I mean, it is hard work. Don't expect quick results and you just have to keep working at it, slow but surely, and you'll hopefully you'll get there. Alan Bates, thank you very much indeed. OK, you're welcome. Thanks.